Kristel Saldemos, a social democrat from Denmark. Were you satisfied with the outcome of the debate on how to label food? Yes, I was very satisfied with the, both the debate we had Monday evening, but also the result of the vote of the resolution. A quite a big majority in the parliament said that we want to have a better labeling of country of origin uh, for uh, processed food. And uh, I'm happy about that because I think it is important that the consumers are well informed so they can make a, a real choice on what they are eating. Uh, and we know from surveys that around 90 percent of all the consumers really want to know more about where the meat uh, comes from. Yes, but so that's comes good. from, is that enough that they know from which country it comes? Well, at the moment it seems as if that's important to know which country. Why? Uh, well, uh, I think that uh, in a global world, where you often see that sometimes food before it ends on the table has, has been uh, circulating two times around the world. It is uh, important for the consumers to have an idea of where is uh, the, uh, the, the animal uh, bred, uh, where did it live, uh, because we know that there are still differences. But a differences. cow is a cow. No, uh, well of course a cow is a cow genetically, but uh, often we have differences in, in, the, in, in the countries, not just within EU but globally, on how to uh, <coughs> tackle animal welfare. But I, I think animal welfare is one thing. I think in, in general the consumers are quite interested in knowing more about the food they are eating and I think that's a fair point of view. And we have already made some improvements. In fact, Renate Sommer was the rapporteur on the food uh, information regulation we made some years ago and we saw some improvements in that. But going a, a, a step further, making a country of origin labeling for processed food is seen from my perspective also important. So therefore I'm happy that the parliament called for this and asked the commission to come up with a proposal. Renate Sommer, um, EPE group uh, and you're from Germany and you were the, re the rapporteur it's called. Um, what were, in your opinion, the outcome of uh, your um, putting forward a, um, a motion for being resolved or being uh, adopted? Um, we were not so happy uh, about that because um, uh, we see um, technical problems and um, it is well known that the consumer uh, uh, says when he is asked, uh, yes, I want to have this country of origin. Uh, we are talking about mandatory labeling of country of origin for meat in processed food. And um, what is um, uh, difficult to do um, in, in reality, because uh, if you look at uh, um, salami um, or other uh, products like that, um, easily you have uh, four to five different uh, kinds of meat as ingredients and uh, if we would have to label it as we have to label fresh meat uh, uh, beginning in April this year, uh, uh, it would mean for each uh, different piece of, of meat in, in that salami would, you would have to label the country um, of rearing uh, plus the country of slaughter of the animal. And uh, uh, that is uh, uh, really too expensive. And the problem is that the consumer uh, in, uh, in the first attempt says, yes, I want to have it. And uh, those are those 90% of the consumers. But um, when you tell them uh, that uh, uh, the food becomes uh, more expensive, that the prices will increase um, a minimum by five to 9%, um, uh, but it, uh, it, it is expected uh, to be higher in the end, then the consumer says no. Um, if it, if uh, uh, the price increases, I don't want to have that labeling. I'm not so interested in but that. But are we facing a real challenge when this so-called agreement between uh, US and Canada and the European Union uh, comes into force, uh, where the labeling from over the other side isn't as accurate as it is in Europe? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, because um, um, uh, when a third country um, exports uh, meat in, uh, into the EU, it has to fulfill all the um, uh, legislative uh, obligations. Um, we fix that in all uh, our legislative acts, uh, that import products uh, must fulfill um, our rules. And um, uh, we banned uh, hormone uh, me uh, beef, for example, years ago. That was a very tough action from this parliament. And we are going to ban cloning. I'm uh, one of the rapporteurs on that. And um, 
uh, I think we can manage that. So um, uh, we uh, allow only uh, meat from third countries to um, come into the EU that fulfills um, all our uh, uh, rules and legislation. So it, it is safe. Crystal Chalmers, are the consumers in your uh, eyes willing to pay a higher price to be knowing more about the food they are going to consume? Well, it is in fact difficult to say because I, I, I suppose it depends on how uh, high the cost will be. But that is also a question because when the Commission asked the industry, they said maybe naturally, because they are against this labeling, that it would cost quite a lot. But other surveys uh, that are not uh, coming from the industry says that it will not be that costly and only be uh, a, a bit, uh, maybe not even a percent uh, more expensive. What I think is that if we're going to have this uh, labeling of uh, country of origin for processed food, uh, meat, then I think we should be flexible in the way we tackle how they label it, so that you don't have to uh, take a, a whole new, uh, new um, uh, Package uh, every time you change your uh, uh, every time you change where you buy your, your food from, uh, but you could put, put it on with a, a, no, a kind no, of no, that's uh, not possible no, because that's forbidden by the Food Information to Consumers Regulation. It has to be printed yeah, yeah, on yeah. the package. It's not yeah, a that's no, no, what no, you no, meant as well. No, but that, yeah. I know that. But mm -hmm. uh, the, that food regulation does not contain uh, have no no regulation on processed uh, food labeling. So if we add a new thing, you could make a new regulation. No, no, yeah, of no, course you can. No, 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 that's can. really fixed in that regulation. No, 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 it no, will if, be not allowed. No, but if we want to have this, uh, we are the legislators and the Commission is going to come up with a proposal well, on this. We have the Council they, on the other hand. They, yeah, 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 but, yeah, but the Council is in general uh, against this. But uh, I'm, I'm not talking about who is in favour or who is against, but who is making the legislation. We are doing it together. And if this is something re we really wish, uh, then it, of course, is possible for us to find a solution uh, on how uh, this is tackled. Look from you, what so. is the next step now? Do you think that the uh, Commission, that the Council will approve what you have uh, now on the table? No, I really don't think so. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> no, um, whether I like it or not, mm -hmm. I don't think so, because uh, the Commission uh, declared in the beginning of its mandate uh, that they want to concentrate on the big things. And um, uh, uh, they want to reduce bureaucracy, for example. And uh, this um, uh, labeling, uh, origin labeling of meat as an ingredient would lead to an increase of bureaucracy costs by 30%. That's what the Commission found out uh, as well in its impact assessment. And um, that is, uh, I think, one of the reasons why the Commission will not come over with a legislative proposal, but nobody knows at the moment. We are waiting I've, on I've the, invited the an expert. Could you please tell who you are and what you're doing? Well, I'm, my name is Finlow Costain and I work for Labelling Matters, which is a, a consumer organisation representing around 10 million EU consumers in countries across the European Union. And we're calling for mandatory method of production labelling on all meat and dairy products underpinned with robust assurance schemes. Uh, and I think it's an interesting conversation about origin labelling. Of course, country of origin labelling is very important, but it's only half the story. And um, what consumers also want to know is the farm system that the food has come from. Uh, and Renard's had talked about uh, the, big, uh, the big ticket issues that the Commission wants to see delivered, and economic growth is clearly one of those. Uh, but there's also an animal welfare strategy, the 2012 to 2015, and one of the key elements of that is, uh, is to see market-driven improvements in farm animal welfare. Now you couple these things together and if the market is able to drive improvements, if the market is able to select higher welfare food products, then you drive economic growth within agriculture. Uh, and there's strong evidence to show that that works. Within the shell egg labelling scheme, which has been in place since 2004, uh, we've seen a, a significant increase from around 20% uh, of the egg laying hen flock in Europe uh, being cage free back in 2003 to now more than 40% in the UK for example, it's, it's more than half of the, the hens are cage-free and living in higher welfare systems which are higher value to the consumer, which means the consumer is paying more, rewarding the producers more, so producers are able to earn more. We want to see economic growth but consumers need information if they're going to be able to drive that growth and drive those standards from the marketplace. During your lecture, so to speak, uh, at the meeting of the Intergroup for Animal Welfare at the European Parliament, you were mentioning also the problems connected to ritual slaughtering uh, because consumers are not always informed about whether the meat comes from halal or shechtning. Uh, shouldn't they be? 
Uh, actually, I, I didn't mention that. It was, uh, it was okay, with, it within Renatus. But, but clearly, our, our view is that consumers should have information, um, that slaughter is part of the method of production, and uh, an EU law says that animals should be stunned when, before they're slaughtered. If there is a derogation, a religious derogation, then consumers should be informed about that. That's, uh, that's our clear position on that. Correct. You were mentioning it also referring to a German uh, decision not to uh, make differences due to religious uh, habits, uh, but shouldn't it be changed? Um, my personal point of view is uh, that we should ha have a labelling of the method of, of slaughter because the so-called slaughter directive is misused by some member states. They slaughter nearly uh, um, all sheep um, uh, ritually um, uh, just to avoid problems in, in, uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, school uh, uh, food and so on. And that's not the right way to go um, as long as uh, those member states uh, do not uh, fulfil the uh, legislative of, uh, obligations of this slaughter directive that forbids this, that allows just uh, the slaughter of uh, exactly that amount that is needed by um, uh, the re relevant religious groups, um, as long uh, 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 as they don't ful fulfill the uh, obligations, uh, I think we should uh, go on thinking about labelling of the slaughter method. Coming from a country, and that's the final question in this round, uh, coming from a country where animal welfare is high at the uh, levels, um, and having a minister in charge of all this, doing his best, even when it comes to ritual slaughter. Um, isn't it simply possible for a country to go ahead, not looking upon general EU standards? Of course, everybody, every country that is going to, to place, uh, or every uh, uh, company who is going to place products on the, on the European market needs to comply with all our regulation. And of course, countries uh, as Denmark needs also to comply with this. What I think is important, and, and that's why I also is, uh, are in favor of this uh, labeling of country of origin for, for, for processed uh, meat, is that I think that consumers have the right to know. Uh, know about the, the food, know about the slaughtering mm -hmm. methods, etc. Because I think it is important that if we should be able to, as a consumer to make an informed choice, we need to have these informations. But of course, I also understand that we have you know, certain problems about how to do it in the right manner uh, and not uh, getting more bureaucracy, but, but make sure that we get the right uh, out of this, that, that the consumers get more information. That's, that's difficult and we need to discuss with each other the best practice and the best way to go forward. But of course, I think in general, the consumers need to know what there is about the food they are eating. Thank you very much.